Number 20. The masses of three electrodes labeled A, B, and C each form three different galvanic cells were measured before and after the cells were allowed to pass current for a while. The mass of electrode A increased, that of electrode B was unchanged, and that of electrode C decreased. Identify each electrode as either active or inert, and note, if possible, whether it functioned as an anode or a cathode. Okay, so we have three electrodes going on here. So let's maybe just write it out over here. We got electrode A, we have electrode B, electrobe, electrode B, and then we have electrode C. Okay. Now, the first things first is that we have to identify each electrode as either active or inert. Now, the only thing that they told us was that what was going on with the masses? The mass of electro A increase. So the mass increased for electrode A. They said that electrode B, the mass was unchanged. So the mass stayed the same. I'll put that as like a, a hyphen. And then the mass of electro C decreased. Okay. Now, identify each as either an active or inert. Now, an active electrode or an inert electrode is basically the difference between what's going on with the masses. If your masses are changing, so if your mass is changing, you are part of being an active electrode in your either your cathode or your anode, right, in your galvanic cell. Inert electrodes are when your masses are staying the same. So the mass is constant. So in this case, electrode A, since the mass increased, this was an active electrode. For electrode B, since the mass did not change, right, it stayed constant, this was inert. And then for electrode C, since that mass decreased, we go back to being an active electrode. So we have 50% of the question done already. Now we just have to go a little further and say, out of electrode A, B, and C, who's the cathode and who's the anode? Well, this now comes from our schematic, right? Our cell schematic or cell diagram, which basically the general form looks like this. Now, in this case, it does not matter if we can draw a schematic. That's not for this question. But the idea is that you have two different um, sections of your uh, galvanic cell. You always have an anode and you always have a cathode. In galvanic cells, the anode is where oxidation occurs. So you could memorize this by saying anox. At the cathode, reduction occurs. You could memorize this by red cat. So we have anox and red cat. But now what is oxidation or reduction? Remember, it's all about electrons. Oxidation is where you lose electrons, and reduction is where you gain them. So it's like a, you know, a transfer of electrons between who's ever at the anode and who's ever at the cathode. Now, in terms of mass, because they didn't say anything about electrons, they just said in mass. Well, remember, you have electrons that are being either lost or gained, and even though electrons are very, 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 very small, and they have very minimal mass, they still have some mass. So if you're losing electrons, you're also losing mass. And on the flip side, if you're gaining electrons, you're gaining mass. So if you're losing mass, your mass is going to drop. If you're gaining mass, your mass is going to increase. So. In electrode A, since clearly the mass was increasing, mass increasing, gain of mass, that's reduction, that happens at the cathode. So this is gonna happen at the cathode. And what is going on with my house? I will check after this, this question is over. But anyway, let's keep going. For electrode C, since this mass is 
decreasing, you're losing mass, you're losing electrons, that's oxidation, and that occurs at the anode. So this would have to be the anode. And then finally, since our inert electrode did not change mass, inert electrodes are a great thing because they can either work at the cathode or the anode. That's why they say, note, if possible, whether it function at an anode. An inert electrode can happen at the cathode and the anode. We do not know for certain from this example. And that is your final answer, all three of these things. There you go. What'd you think? Thank you for viewing the video. I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. I hope you all are having a great day out there. And keep studying hard, all right? I'm rooting for you on your next quiz or test. You got this. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.